Hello again. In the previous video we saw how to do a very very simple SQL injection attack. There is a couple of tricks that are very interesting to apply in these simple cases that allow you to get a little bit further and we'll take a look at a few of these tricks in this next video. Recall that last time we used the union operator to retrieve all the passwords of the users from a database and that they were hashed. Um, one of the interesting things that we encountered was that we were able to inspect the code like I do here and figure out that there's two columns exactly here so that we were able to introduce a union operator with the correct number of columns. However, the source code will not always be available, but it's interesting that as adversaries we will not care that we don't have access to the source code and we should still be able to do the attack. For the, the first trick, let's see if we can figure out how many columns there are in this select query. And uh, in order to do that, I will open up, a, up again my editor. And this is a trick that I also recommend that you do to open up the editor and type the query um, that the programmer has typed in, in this case. Um, but also, if you don't have access to the source code, you could type in something that says, you know, I don't know what, uh, what is here, I don't know what is here, I will figure these things out. And there's maybe some sort of unknown condition here, and at some point I'm able to type something there. Right, so this is something that we assume is the query, and based on that, we will figure it out. So for this particular example, let's just see if we can figure out the number of columns that exist in the select statement. And um, notice that this will not be very difficult, because if we try to union two different things, the left-hand side here and the right-hand side here, these two select queries must have a matching number of fields. So if I specify here a result table that has just one column, for example this, then that would mean that this union operator should fail. And uh, well, what do we have here? This is just a query that is true for every record. And let's not forget the programmer's code at the end. Of course, we can't enter new lines. So here we go. This is the thing that we will enter. And it's the thing that I'm selecting here. It's the thing that I'm going to type in, uh, except for the last quote. The last quote I'm not going to type in. So remember that the quotes around my selection that I have not selected are what the programmer typed, and the query that I've selected is something that as an adversary I will enter in my field. And I expect this to cause an error because the number of fields here, which is unknown in this um, example, will not match what I'm typing here. So this is just a trial to see if the number of columns here is exactly equal to one, and this will fail. Now if I try to enter here two different fields, and let's say user ID again, uh, rather, well, let's say actually, Let's say that we know one column name, and uh, I'll get back to this later. And um, I don't know any others, so I can just say that I want to select the user ID, and then the next column that I want to select is just a constant, and that's the number one. So what this will do is it will create one record per user, because this is true for all users, and in the first column it will put the user ID, and in the second column it will put the constant one just for every one. Right, so this is a two-column result, and um, if I input it here, then this should actually match the number of columns that exist in the programmer's select statement, and let's see if it works. And you can see that it does, and here's the user ID, and here is the, um, the constant one. So from this, we can deduce that there's two columns here. Let's call them A and B, that we don't really know their names, but maybe we need to find them. Let's, let's just call them question marks. Okay, but what if I don't really know any column name like that and I still want to figure out how many columns there are in this uh, in this select query. And for now let's assume that I, I know the, the, ta the table name but um, maybe we, we will be able to lift this assumption as well. And uh, well the thing I can do is I can just do that, right? What this does is it says well, just select these two constants. So just create one row in the result set and put the constant 1 and the constant 2 as the single individual two columns that exist here. And of course, I can do that, this with a single column as well. So let's try it with one column. And you can see here, I, I don't need to know any column names at all. I can just figure out the count of the fields in the select query like that. 
So here you go, and it says the used select statements have a different number of columns. So this is exactly what the union operator is causing as an error. And if here I put 1, 2, should now be successful, and it's showing the 1 and the 2 that I'm entering there, which is great. Um, if I enter a 1, 2, 3, then again it will fail because now I have three columns in my result set while the programmer's query has just two columns. And uh, this is basically the trick. So if you don't know the number of columns, what you have to do is start guessing. Maybe it's one column, maybe it's two, maybe it's three, maybe it's you know up to 20 or uh, whatever, but I will be able to find it pretty quickly because the number of columns is going to be de uh, definitely something relatively low. So that's the way we figure out how many columns there are in a select statement. Well, until now, we've been assuming that we know the table name, but perhaps this is something that we don't know either. So let's make a question mark for that, and maybe also from that. And um, you, know, you will notice that in my example of the union statement, in order to find out how many columns there are in the original select query, I had to kind of know a table name. But um, that's not really required. And if you think about it, I can just run a simple select statement in MySQL without any table names. I can just type select, you know, one comma two, and this should return a single row result set. So a result set with one row only and two columns with values one and two. So in this result set, the column names are one and two, and the column values are just one and two. And that's a very, very simple SQL query. And I can do this with as many columns as I like. So that would be for one column, for two, or for three. Right. So ideally, I would like to do something like, you know, select one, and that's it. I want a union with select one. But note again, there is this annoying single closing or closing quote, yeah, from the programmer, which is getting in the way. And um, in this case, I can avoid it by, by just enclosing my whole constant into a single quote. And of course, this union will still give me an error that there's a mismatching number of columns. But, but for this attack, I'm um, not required to know the table name at all. So I can just deduce the number of columns without any additional information. So let's see if this works. And it should give me the error that I expect. And that's exactly it. And I can do the same for two columns. So in this case, uh, my constants are strings, and note here what I'm doing is I'm adding a second column like that. So what I'm going to be typing is this. This is already something that I typed there, right? So this, in this case, it should work and should give me a single result with one and two. And here you have it. And therefore, we deduce that there's just two fields in the select query without um, knowing anything about the name of the table or the name of the columns. Um, another trick uh, that we can use to avoid this last uh, single quote that was there is to use an SQL comment. So if I want to type this kind of thing, um, if I want to run the select query 1, 2 and I don't want to put them in quotes, what I can do is I can use the double uh, dashes like this, which introduces a SQL comment, which means that anything on the right of this symbol should be considered uh, a programmer's command. And therefore, SQL will just execute this part, which is a valid statement, right? So in this way, this is a very common trick when you do SQL injections. You put this comment in the end, and then the rest of the query of the programmer is completely ignored. And in this simple case, we just had a single closing quote, which was kind of getting in the way. But in more complicated situations, you could have a bit more of a complicated query that is a bit more difficult to subvert without adding a comment like that. So let's try and see if it works. And notice that in order for this to be a comment, it needs to have spaces around it. So let's make sure that we get the syntax right. Um, so I'm putting a single space as well. And uh, let's see if this works. And indeed, without messing at all with the, with the closing quote of the programmer, just commenting it out, we um, have managed to deduce the number of columns um, very elegantly, I find. Well, the next question that comes to mind is, we figured out the number of the columns, but how can we figure out the names of the tables and the names of the columns so that we can um, figure out that the table is called users 
and the field is called password. Uh, and in order to do that, let's take a look at what my SQL does in its own databases. So here I am logged in to a MySQL database and um, let's take a look at the tables that it has. So, oops, uh, show databases. So here, um, this is an application um, database. It has two user databases, a database called Ting and a database called WordPress. It's just a usual web application database. And um, there's something that you will notice in every sort of database that you have encountered is that there is always an information schema database and this always has the same name. So this is actually a meta database that my SQL uses to store the information about the schema of the database. Things such as the table names and the column names, which is exactly what we're interested in here. So let's take a look at what schema this meta database has or what tables it has. So let's go into this database. There we go. And let's see if we can um, show the tables. There's a bunch of tables here. All of them are very interesting. It's all the um, metadata of our of web application database. And um, there's a few interesting tables that we will um, take advantage of in this attack. One is called tables. And this is a table uh, of the meta database that contains one row for every um, table of our target database. And the other table of the meta database that we're interested in is the columns um, table. And this meta database table, the columns table, contains one row for every column of each regular table. So let's take a look at what the schema of these meta database tables is. And uh, we can do this with describe. We can say describe tables. So show me what the table table, what the tables table looks like. And um, there's a bunch of fields here. And these are descriptive fields for each um, table. And what we're interested in is the table name, um, table name field. Okay, so let's see if we can use this new information that we found out about how MySQL stores its own tables in order to get a list of all the tables that our um, victims database has. So what we what we will do is first. I'm going to write a query, which is what we want to execute, and then I'm going to see if I can fit it in this union structure. So I will do a select, and what I will select is I will select table name from the tables table, right? But this is a table of the meta, meta database, so I will need to specify my database name, which is called information underscore schema. And remember that the dot separates a database name from a table name. And so here's I've selected table name from information schema tables. And if I run this query, it should return one record for each table of my original database. Uh, so that's all I need to run basically. And uh, with a union there, I can I can just go ahead and use my common trick as well here. And uh, that's basically it. Um, one last thing is that the number of fields in this right hand side result set is not matching the number of fields on the left hand side result set and this is something that we figured out with the 1,2 uh, constants trick so I will add a constant here to match up the number of columns and um, this should do the trick so let's see if it works um, and this should retrieve a list of all the tables okay so um, this is great, we have a list of all the tables and um, you can see that there is um, there's information coming from multiple databases, right? So it's not just um, it's not just the particular database, but it's also the, uh, the other databases. So um, indeed we have a users table, we have also a guest book table, but you can see there's also the names of the meta database tables for example, a self-reference to the tables uh, table of the meta database. Um, but we don't mind this, it's just extra information, so that's great. And in this way, we can deduce that, oh, you know, his pro the, this is probably where the user records are stored and where the password is stored, even if we didn't have access to the source code and we didn't have access to the name 
of um, this particular table. It could be something weird, right? Finally, let's see if we can deduce also the names of the columns without having to guess them. Columns such as password and first underscore name. Um, well, we notice here that there's also a columns table. So let's see what the schema of this metadatabase table is. And we have something called the, the column name somewhere. We should have it. There it, there it is. And this contains uh, the column name, the name of the column. Um, and this metadatabase table should contain one row for each column of each table of each database in our MySQL server. So if we dump this whole um, metadatabase table, we should see all the columns of all the tables. So it's going to be quite a huge list. Well, uh, fortunately, we can just um, limit what we are looking at by applying a WHERE clause on the table underscore name uh, and telling it that we're all only interested in seeing the user's table, and that's all. So um, I will not separate it from the union now, but if you get confused about the syntax, maybe you want to write your query separately before going ahead and typing it within the, in the injection directly. But um, let's go ahead and do it directly here. And what I want to do is I want to grab the column name from information schema columns where table name is equal to users. And note here in this case, I don't even need the MySQL comment anymore because, um, well, I, I actually needed, needed a string. So that's funny and it makes it, it's, it makes our lives easier. So this should retrieve all the column names from the users table. And in this way, I should be able to find that there is a password field, there's a first name field, and so on. And there you go, that's the whole schema of the users table. You've got yourself a user ID, first name, last name, and the password, which is the critical authentication resource. Now, based on that, we can conduct our previous attack without having any access to the source code. Remember, all we needed was the number of columns and the names of the columns that we want to retrieve, as well as the table name. And that's all uh, something that we retrieved using the union trick with constants and the information schema metadatabase. So that concludes this attack. And I want to take it a little bit further and um, take this low level to medium. And if you want, you can go ahead and pause this video and see if you can figure out what's going on yourself before I tell you. Let's take a look at the source code. And um, here you can see that the programmer has applied something called MySQL real escape string. And um, that's something that escapes our query. And uh, that would mean that if we enter any, any single quote in here, like I did here, this will be escaped. So a backslash will be applied to the single quote within my input. And therefore, this whole string will be treated like a string in my SQL because this character does not close this single quote. This is a literal single quote and it's included within this big string. And so it seems that it may be impossible to escape this string. But if you take a closer look to this source code, this is not actually true. So go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can figure out how you can do this attack. Okay, well, the other change that we can see that the uh, programmer applied here is that they included the ID without any single quotes around it, even in the um, statement itself. And the reason that the programmer is doing that here is that they assume probably, oh, you know, this is going to be a number, so in SQL, I don't need to put quotes around it. Well, that means that, again, this is something that we can attack. And we don't really need to close any quotation marks because there aren't any. So this is the query that the programmer has typed. And here you go. We already know um, the, the column names and uh, the count of the columns and the table name. This is something that we can figure out easily. And um, here we can just, you know, type in any command that we like without any quotes whatsoever. All we need to do is type in this and it should work. So let's see if this does the work. And indeed, here we have the enumeration, 
and immediately we can even uh, union with a select of um, first name comma password from users and there you have it you already have the hashed passwords as a last part of this video I want to take a look at the blind SQL injection section so let's bring the security back to low and take a look at the blind SQL injection so if you take a look at the source code of this you will see that the programmer has been a little bit more precautious here they have removed any die statements that we had before and they've added an add character here to suppress any errors and um, you probably noticed previously that it was super easy to deduce whether we've made uh, an error in the syntax of SQL but here the error will not be displayed however if I try again to put a single quote in here you will see that because this is blinded there's no uh, no way to tell no easy way no obvious way to tell that there has some error happened but if we um, think about what the source code could be, even if we don't have access to the source code, and we assume that if we close the single quote mark, we are in an environment where we can type SQL statements, then um, this should allow us to try out some things. And the most obvious one is, you know, maybe something like this. As before, we are augmenting our select query with something that should be true every time for every record. So if we add this to the where clause, it should give us all the records. And indeed here you have it, it's all the records um, that we had from before. And so we can deduce that this is vulnerable even though we don't have access to any kind of um, any kind of error whatsoever. Right. And we can use again the same union tricks. We can say you know union select um, let's say select um, table name, let's do that from, um, I think it was like that, information schema dot tables, right, and then do a thing like that, I think that should work, no, so here you see I tried something, it has an error, but it doesn't tell me, so this is exactly why um, blind SQL injections or SQL injections that don't show you any error feedback are a little bit harder but um, there's nothing preventing me from actually examining what I'm doing here and um, and trying to figure out what what's wrong so if so if I look at it I should be able to figure it out and um, well let me just verify that the, the names of the metadata columns are correct so if I go back here um, I see that I've missed um, an underscore between the word table and the word name so I can fix that I can go ahead and fix that and uh, if I fix it now I have access to to all the tables and there uh, there you have it now um, of course I can do the same thing with uh, the columns as before so I can say oh look at the columns and uh, I want to look at the column name and in this case I want to say uh, where table name is equal to users and I don't need my comment and again I've made a mistake so you can see there's this this is a, something that you will have to do you don't have any guidance from any um, errors that are easier to use you know and uh, indeed here I've made a mistake in my number of fields but if I add another field here sure work just fine so here you have the column names for uh, the users table it's um, it's fully dumped. The last missing puzzle piece is how to retrieve the number of columns if we don't have any indication that an error is happening. And if I try the previous trick and I do you know union select one and then add a, a comment like that, this will just retrieve uh, an empty page, right? If if I do it correctly and I add two fields which are truly what this is, um, however you get some sort of result here so there's some sort of differentiation in the output so it's maybe um, maybe you can call this an output sensitive blind SQL injection if you do one two three you have an error if you do one two you don't have an error if you do one you have an error but this error is not displayed however the content is affected so let's think about why this content is affected if this is er erroneous if this is causing an error then there's no way that SQL can retrieve any output from this statement I can just go ahead run it there's no output but if I do this if I add a comma and a two here then this query is no longer erroneous 
which means that, well, the left-hand side of the union query will be an empty result set as before. However, the right-hand side of the union uh, operator will be a result set that has a single row and multiple columns. So this should show if there is no error. It should show at least one row in the result. So indeed, if I run it, I get uh, a result that shows me that this guess for the number of columns was correct. And um, lastly, let's take a look at the medium difficulty for the, uh, for the blind SQL injection here. And you will notice that um, it's exactly the same as the medium level for the um, simple SQL injection. So there's nothing really interesting here. Um, it just calls my SQL real escape string and then you have full access to enter commands within your ID variable without the need to open or close any uh, single quotes. The only thing you need to be aware of is that if you really want to have um, an actual single quote there or an actual backslash, backslash or a double quote there, is something you can't have. So for example, my, um, my uh, query that I entered to retrieve all the columns from information schema pertaining to the users table would not be possible because I needed a WHERE clause where the, the table name was equal to users. Um, however, what I can do is I can retrieve all the columns from all the tables. So let me try and do that now. So what I will do here is a blind SQL injection that is forbidding single quotes and backslashes, but I can still say, you know, zero union select and then I want to select let's say just you know one and two to see if this works and this works indeed I go ahead and um, I change this and say from information schema dot columns right and then instead of one and two well this should still work right and then instead of one and two I want to select all the possible columns and all the possible table names and because I have two fields here that um, the union allows me to have two values, so I can just get the table name and get the column name without any where clauses, and that should be fine. And indeed, if I look for the users table, you have all the fields of the users table, and you have all the fields of all the other tables as well. For example, we also dumped the table named guest book, which has um, three columns, comment ID, comment, and name. So there you have it. You can still dump the whole schema and um, yeah, I guess this concludes the um, basic SQL injection that uh, DVWA has to teach you. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. If you did enjoy this video, please thumbs up and subscribe. Questions and suggestions are always welcome in the section below. Till next time, so long.